I have mentioned some things with this homemade paper and I brought a few other examples in to show. Obviously you can um, cut the, the rectangles so it's more rectangular and not so homemade looking. Um, but this is all made from recycled material. So I just brought some in to show. I, um, like a lot of you maybe, have a recycling bin in my kitchen. And so I just like go in there and get the paper. So like old junk mail and things. And you can basically use as thin of paper as you want, but this is about as thick as you can do. So like a cereal box is what this is, but don't use like a moving box or something. So um, that is the recycled material used. Uh, this is more of the paper I made from it. So what's funny about this whole process is um, I put the, the recycled paper um, into a blender with water. And so this was all white paper except for one hot pink note card and that's what it did. So that's kind of cool if you want to make a certain color. And then these other ones that are gray or brown or whatever, it was actually magazine paper, which was like a lot of different colors all mixed together. And that's what it does, kind of like paint. So I'll teach you more about specifically how to make that in our class September 27th, if you want to sign up. Um, but for now, some things that I've made. Um, I had some leftover scraps of the paper and made some earrings out of those scraps. So this is kind of how these turned out. And I just used this Mod Podge to glue all the scraps together and make a little hole for the earring. So those, and then I made some question mark earrings. So you can do all sorts of things with this homemade paper. Um, so another thing that I have created is this little sketchbook notebook type of thing. The only things I needed to buy were um, these book rings that are one and a half inches, but you could probably do one inch if you wanted, and this hole punch. So what I did was I started with paper that looked like this and then sliced it down with my handy dandy exacto knife and made it into this size. So the cover and the back are made of this like hot pocket uh, cardboard box that I recycled. Um, and so I'll just show you some of the things inside. So this is like watercolor paper you can buy at the store. It's really smooth and that's what the watercolor looks like on it. But then I made or I put some watercolor on my own paper that I made and you can kind of see it's way more textured. I like it because I love having layers and just depth and so that's what this does. You can kind of see the difference. So the cool thing about this paper is you can um, come up with different concepts. So for example, you want to talk about wildlife or saving the sea turtles, then you're already reusing and recycling by making the paper. So then you can draw a little sea turtle or draw wildlife on it. And um, that brings a whole concept to life. Same thing with this little sketch I used. You know how you get all those prescription papers when you get medicine. I used a bunch of those that I didn't need anymore. And so this paper is made from those. And then you can draw whatever type of medicine things if you want to make a statement about medicine on it. Um, here I was just sewing into some paper to see what it did. And uh, here I have some crazy hands that I made. They're kind of weird, but um, yeah, you can just kind of do whatever you like and you'll get some good texture. And um, like in this one, there's a lot of little teeny words and letters from the paper I used sticking out. So um, I think that's about it. Yeah. So 
you can make really cool things like a whole sketchbook or journal with this stuff um, and then personalize it like I made the cover blue which is my favorite color and put a star for this thing you might have heard of rejection um, for every time I get a no for an artist call I just thought I should celebrate it just like you celebrate the yeses so um, those are my little stars you have your paper and you just want to make a rainbow we would start with red of course but see how fast it soaks it up so you need a lot of water and um, there are ways to uh, to use the paper with watercolor where it won't soak it up this fast and that is if you cover it in Mod Podge first so I think I have a page in here that I did that to um, well this one is already Mod Podge so you can kinda see like the red is there but when I paint it it's not gonna soak it up as much it'll be more spreadable like that so that's kind of a nice thing to know um, the Mod Podge just makes it like harder and makes all of the texture a little bit um, softer so that is a little bit of the examples with the watercolor um, and now I'm gonna show you if you're a child, please ask an adult for help with one of these. But um, this is an X-Acto knife, and you can get them at all the art stores, maybe even like Walmart. I'm not totally sure. But um, it just makes it really precise when you want to cut. So when I put the paper down here and then use the knife, I'm going to have to do it in sections, <laughs> but it will cut it, and it takes a little bit of strength, <laughs> but that's how you get your smooth edge all the way around if you wanted to do that. You can also use scissors. I just am a fan of the X-Acto knife. If you want to um, learn exactly how to make rectangles of paper like this, um, sign up for the Zoom class September 27th.